Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, August 7th, 2013. Now that we are back, it wouldn't be Brainstorm without some news from the world of medicine involving stem cells. As we've mentioned many times before, stem cells are amazing and potentially the key to curing many diseases. The trouble is usually actually getting the stem cells. Some researchers from Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center have isolated stem cells from an unlikely source. Back in 2006, they first identified a subset of cells found in urine to actually be a type of stem cell. This isn't so surprising considering that pretty much every organ has a population of stem cells that help renew those specific tissues. But these stem cells are unique for two reasons. Unlike other stem cell populations found throughout the human body, these urine-derived stem cells are, as you can guess, relatively easy to access. And despite being derived from the urinary tract, these stem cells have demonstrated that they can become a wide variety of cell types. The researchers were able to derive bone, cartilage, skeletal muscle, nerves, and endothelial cells. They also showed no tendency toward forming tumors, unlike other stem cell types, which means they are potentially very safe. Some of the cells grown on scaffolds and implanted in mice also formed layered tissue types. While they showed signatures of being somewhat like connective tissue and blood vessel associated stem cells, they're most likely from the kidney. Next, the researchers will be investigating their therapeutic potential further in finding out exactly where they came from in the body. And our next story is an update from the world of biotechnology. A team from Japan has identified and tested a new gene in rice that may help farmers during a drought. The population continuing to grow while we are causing severe climate change is just really bad timing. Which is why we need new crops that can handle extreme conditions while producing higher yields. These Japanese scientists examined a strain of rice grown in the dry uplands of the Philippines. Unlike most kinds of rice, which grow in wet fields and form spread out root systems, this strain's roots tend to grow straight down to absorb the scarce moisture in the soil. The Japanese scientists were able to identify the specific gene that caused this trait. After creatively naming it Deep Rooting, or DRO1, they spliced this gene into a more common rice strain grown throughout Asia and ran some tests. Both the unaltered and engineered rice plants were grown in ideal, moderate drought, and severe drought conditions. Moderate drought barely affected the engineered rice, while reducing the original strain to 42% the ideal yield. Severe drought conditions destroyed the unaltered rice completely, while dropping yield by 30% in the modified strain, which is a significant improvement. With these encouraging results, they plan to test the new rice strain in a more realistic field setting before spreading it around Asia. They also hope to splice this gene into other strains of rice, such as those commonly grown in South America. It's very encouraging news with such a dramatic improvement in a staple crop. Speaking of plants and climate change, we end with a story from the world of biology as it applies to the environment. Many groups are attempting to find effective carbon sequestration technologies to help absorb some of the CO2 we have put into the environment. A recent study by scientists in Germany has suggested a technique called carbon farming, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like, growing a bunch of trees. They have a particular species in mind that is small and can grow in conditions not suitable for agricultural land. Now, large-scale cultivation would still require some irrigation, so coastal areas with desalinated water available would be the most ideal. But based off models and some experimental data, they estimate that a hectare of this plant could absorb up to 25 tons of CO2 per year. Scaling that up to the size of 3% of the Arabian Desert could absorb CO2 equivalent to the entire output of Germany's cars. And if the 1 billion hectares of potential land for this plant was utilized, it could absorb a significant amount of total atmospheric CO2. 
The study also showed that the cost would be around 42 to 63 euros per ton of CO2, which actually makes it competitive with other carbon sequestration technologies. Obviously, this is still very theoretical, but the scientists hope this study will encourage more investment and investigation of the potential benefits of carbon farming. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. We would again like to thank you for all your support of this series. Please share us on Facebook, Twitter, through YouTube, or your blog if you'd like. And this time, leave us some science or other questions in the comments, and we'll answer them on the next episode of our podcast. Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.